Call the meeting for order for the Animal Parks and Rec Commission. Um, first, I'm going to call the roll. Roll call, yes. Commissioner Abraham? Here. Commissioner Bites? Not present. Commissioner Doherty? Here. Commissioner Shibashi? Here. Commissioner Mitchell? Here. Vice Chair Te Teeter? Here. And Chair Fidrich? Here. Thank you. I move that we approve the, what was it, February? February 2nd minutes. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstains? I abstain. Any noes? Thank you. Okay, so next we have uh, presentations. Any presentations for tonight? Okay, how about oral requests? Okay, next let's go to unfinished business from the last meeting. So at the February 2nd meeting, we discussed updating the work plan items for fiscal 23 along with goals. And um, I modified the first bullet for the work plan to say conduct annual review of CI pro CIP projects funded through the Parkland Dedication Fund. Uh, and then I switched out the all-inclusive playground and the second one to be the Campbell Park, have the tour and discuss the prog progress. Uh, and then planning and participating in the grand reopening or unveiling of the uh, event for the Campbell Park when that one's done. And then lastly, we did not make any changes to review, provide early input and prioritize fiscal 23 projects. We just updated it to the current fiscal year. In the goals, um, everything stayed the same. I added the first one, participate in long-term planning and funding opportunities for pool and other facility needs at the community center. So I'm happy to take direction if you'd like other changes or allow the commissioners to discuss the changes. I'm sorry, what, what is CIP again, Campbell? It stands for Capital Improvement Projects. Capital Improvement Projects. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I just want to comment. I'm not quite sure if it goes as part of the commission's goals or not, or. Maybe it's a side thing. You know, a few years ago, I had um, talked about the idea of maybe as Campbell Park was being redone to do something around art in that park. And I'm more than happy to you know, be the liaison with, uh, with the, um, what's that, the Campbell Improvement Commission would be, that, that would be? Civic the Civic Commission. Improvement yeah. Commission, yeah. Um, so I'm more than happy to, to work with the Civic Commission to see if there is you know, funding available from their side or what their interest would be. And I'm not sure if that would go under the commission goals or if that's you know, something that's added or not. So I'm just kind of opening that up. Doesn't have to, but just something I've been interested in. It's currently listed under goals. Is your question whether it should be a work plan item or a goal? Uh, we could fall under that collaborate with civic improvement on potential public car projects. No, I die, okay. Yeah. Okay. I think it was. I have to admit, I didn't see it down there. The that's okay. I, it was definitely brought up when you mentioned yeah. and added. It's just COVID has really halted a lot of yeah. those projects, so yeah. there hasn't been much okay. modification other than the the pool was kind of a new topic that was brought up at the last meeting. Right. Um, under the collaboration, okay, the BPAC, 
Bicycle. Oh, okay. Bicycle pedestrian. So is there a, a group where we as a commission could interface with when um, volunteers are asked to go out and help make improvements and some of the, you know, cleanups and stuff? So the BPAC is about um, bicycle and pedestrian okay. access right. within our community and being bike friendly, walkability, those kinds of things, um, and, and trail improvements and how those can be changed. I It would be collaborating with them if there was any projects coming down the pipeline or ideas or brainstorming for future projects that could be brought forward. Uh, it wasn't necessarily about, um, I don't know. I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> Go for it. I thought I heard in your question something about volunteers. Yes. And what would you what 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 is it that you were getting at? Is is there a mechanism to to better connect volunteers to specific types of projects? Yes. I was talking to Carol Hoffman, and she was walking downtown. I forget last week, and she was headed over to Edith Morley, where they were doing a, a cleanup project. And yes. I thought, oh, well, if I'd heard and I'd had time, I would have volunteered. Yes. We'll That's give you Bob Carlson's cell phone number. <laughs> well, I, I, I will say that in general, uh, under, under normal times, <laughs> we would do much larger scale volunteer projects and we would uh, invite the commission and that has not really been the case over the last two years. And so that the, the, the project that you saw at Edith Morley was actually a really nice project, um, but it was, also, it was still on the small side. So as we get into to larger projects, that's probably something where we can work co more collaboratively between the commission staff and sometimes through our service groups. And a lot of those projects run through, through Bob Shazinski and he'll, He'll probably talk a little bit about that on his report out, but you know, I think it's good to keep that on, on the commission's radar. We could add under goals to participate in park cleanups and volunteer projects if that pleases the commission too. I personally would like to do that. I don't know about, okay. Yes, please. Yeah, we got one more. Uh, under the <clears throat> hold the PRC meeting in a park, can we do John D. Morgan Park? Uh, or I, I guess I'd like to know how successful the all-inclusive park or play structure is uh, now that it's open. Sure, we can definitely make sure that happens this this year. You're saying a tour of the park, or well, if we're going to do sorry if we're going to conduct a meeting in a park can we do that park and kind of include it and see how things are going see who's out there look at the parking etc sure i've added just to backtrack a little bit an, an additional bullet under the goals regularly participate in park cleanup and park volunteer projects I mean, just just one question. Back to your point, John. Sh should we make one of the goals kind of a twelve month checkup just to kind of see how that if that park is meeting the goals that were set out for it? I don't, I don't have any problem with that. Um, I think it, maybe it can be a goal. It can continue on as Campbell Park will be redone here in the near future. So some type of just status check on how things are going once the park has been significantly redone if you will i think it's a fair point yeah i think that's great because the city spent so much money and time on that doing some type of check you know nine months afterwards or yeah, so, yeah. Just kind of i think that's good so we're involved a lot on the front end but not so much on the back end to see how things turn out so obviously we can go see it but it'd be nice as what, a commission what, maybe. what are some of the measurement things that we can put down as what we deem as successful or not successful. <laughs> I get I, I, mean, I haven't thought that far ahead. I don't know. But <laughs> it's just a question. So parks, I think many of us know, many of you probably know, there's really not a lot of scientific, you know, uh, objective measures in terms of parks. I mean, there are for 
larger parks where maybe you can measure attendance, you can measure the length of a visit. In neighborhood parks, it, it's really almost kind of anecdotal. Um, so I think holding meetings in, in part, you know, we've got parks that, that are probably more community wide serving than they are neighborhood, but holding an evening meeting, a weekday evening meeting in a park like that will give you a, a good sense of that because, you know, all of our parks are busy on every weekend day. So I think if you see them on, on a weeknight in the summer, one end or the other of the summer, that, that will give you a, a good sense of the level of utilization. Uh, it's probably also good that we have a parks and trail subcommittee who's probably gonna check in and you know let us know what they're seeing when, when they're around and about too. But, but I, I, would, I would recommend that, that, that what you're, what, where I think you're going is maybe our meeting in the park this year, maybe summer toward the end of summer would be a good wrap up of the, of the John D. Morgan inclusive project. And then the timing would suggest that doing the same thing a year from then in Campbell Park would be about nine, eight or nine or 10 months after that one's complete as well. So I, I think we're on a pretty good, headed toward a pretty good cycle here. And if I could also suggest, um, I just caught this, that in, in the last bullet under Park and Recreation Commission goals, collaborate with the BPAC to identify trail improvement concepts for Campbell Park. We've really already done the Campbell Park specific one. So it might pay us, it might, yeah, we might be better served to, to say, yeah, let's not call it trail improvements, but maybe bicycle connections to all city parks. Because in some cases there won't be a trail. It just might be if we can improve a bike lane or a bike route to help get folks to an, another neighborhood park. Is the commission okay with that change? Collaborate with BPAC to identify bicycle connection to all city parks? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And then after hearing um, Director Caperso conduct a parks or hold a PRC meeting in a park, um, maybe hold a, uh, a PRC meeting in a year after recently renovating a park. Mm -hmm. or nine months to a year yeah okay. perfect anything else so natasha do we vote for the approval for this i will bring this back next month in a report so it actually gets published for okay. our use um you to refer back to at a later time so this i think i have it all finalized for you guys at this point and it'll just kind of be a quick approval next Got time it. thank you thank you okay let's move on to new business talking about the campbell park campbell park renovation update Okay, thank you. Just wanted to give you a quick update. I know we've talked about some of the, you know, we've talked about the status of our projects at, in various meetings in the past. Uh, last month, we told you what the update was more with regard to the award of the contract, how the bids came in high, we were able to secure additional funds and then ultimately award the contract. And this month, we're happy to report that the construction contract is officially underway. So as of earlier this week, the park the part that's going to be improved was fenced off. So that includes the, the play area, the restroom building. And uh, as a result of that, we do, we do have temporary restrooms in place, um, hand washing stations there as well. And I think it's worth noting that, um, that, our, that I, I would like to think that our, our strategy uh, played out well by being able to construct the new pathway that takes you down from Campbell and Gilman down to the Creek Trail. So the access to and from the Creek Trail and the rest of the park is, is um, quite nice, even with the play area and the restroom area being fenced off. So um, I feel pretty good about that. I was just out there this afternoon. I, I thought that was, that was really nice. Um, there will be some parking challenges, uh, more so than normal. <laughs> uh, we know that Campbell Park is a, is a much loved park. 
uh, there will be 12 stalls out of commission in the main parking lot. And they are already out of commission as of this week. So if you get out there, you, you'll see what that's all about. So uh, fortunately, there's a little bit of, of on-street parking there. You know, it can be challenging. In some cases, people will have to either cross, cross Gilman or, or in some cases even, you know, may have to go further out and use the signal at Campbell and Gilman. But um, the, the access is there, the park is underway. And uh, our intent, if we stick to our schedule, will be that uh, we will be complete in October of this year, October of 2022. And so uh, all this discussion that we're having about having a park meeting, a PRC meeting in a park, should, should tee up Campbell Park very nicely. We will do a park tour along the way when it's a little more appropriate. There's not much to see right now other than it looks exactly the same, except that it's fenced off. Um, and just, just so you do know, at this point, our plan is to stick to Monday through Friday working hours for the contractor, eight to five. Uh, we have made exceptions in the past if there have been challenges where we've fallen behind or had reason to, to have to consider alternatives. We, we do not have that in the plan at this point. So at this point, we're looking at, at a straight Monday through Friday construction schedule looking to be done in October. That's all I have on that. Thank you. I have one question, Todd. Yes. What kind of noticing or signage do we have out there that, that says why it's closed? Is there some kind of board or something that shows what's going to, what's happening or what it will look like on the back end? I don't know that we do. I wasn't necessarily looking for that today. And I don't recall the last time we talked about that. But, but if we don't, I think we can address, I think we can address that. I think, um, yeah, I think it'll help because people will say, well, look what's going right. to be here. It's going to be fantastic. Right. Right. It, that would be nice for us to have a sign with maybe some of the, uh, some of the con uh, conceptual drawings that we have. Mm -hmm. That's a good, that's a good idea. Yes, it will. <laughs> <laughs> or, or the calls will just be more specific about what they that's, see that's in the right. conceptual <laughs> drawings. I have a question about what's on the picture. Anybody else? Next, are you still up, Todd? The, well, I'm up tracks? only in, in as much as I'm going to ask Ron, Ron Terramina to come up here and talk to you a little bit about the uh, about the community center track project. So we have Excellent. some good news on that. That's moving forward as well. There we go. Uh, just to let you know regarding the Campbell Park also, um, there is a sign going up. We were just out there yesterday. So there is one sign going up. They were trying to find the best spot for it. And they were talking about getting another sign to put it on the other side. So people are aware what's, what's coming. So, um, th there is a sign already and they're thinking about getting the second one. So hopefully that should be up. If not already, it probably will be up in the next day or so is my understanding. So, um, just wanted to let everybody know that on, uh, I think it was the 15th, Becca, I'm not for sure. We had a mandatory pre-bid walk for the track resurfacing project. And um, it was mandatory. You had to be there uh, if you wanted to bid on the project. If you didn't show up, you weren't allowed to bid on it. So um, it wasn't a big turnout. We had two contractors show up. Um, and uh, we walked the site and everything. Um, we had one one contractor that we kind of knew and one contractor we didn't know very much about uh, but uh, after the bid opening uh, we found out that uh, we awarded the contract to uh, they're called being on sports servicing incorporated and they're out of fresno that's one of the reasons why we didn't get a big turnout either is because in northern california this area there's not a lot of contractors that do that type of servicing work so you kind of got to reach further out um, and part of it also is that um, being this CDBG project, there's a lot of requirements that are asked of the contractor to adhere to. Um, and uh, that may have deterred some of the smaller contractors from wanting to bid on it. So I feel that we have a good contractor and being on sports servicing, uh, a lot of literature from them and, and stuff. So we're, we're looking forward to it. Um, some of the stuff that we're doing tomorrow, we're posting the track closure um, for, we're planning on uh, closing it down 
on March 14th, and it'll run all the way through April 29th. Uh, the, the project duration is about 25 working days is what they're telling us. Um, you know, not that we don't want rain, but we're just kind of praying we don't get any rain because that's really gonna put a kibosh to the project. Um, so the plan is to have some nice weather um, and this way we can get in, do all the demo work and put it back together. Um, as I said, if we finish quicker, the, then the, it'll open up and I'll let Natasha know, you know, if we're able to open up before the 29th. Uh, I know it's a heavily used site. Um, during the closure too, there'll be no access to obviously the track or the exercise equipment that's in the back by the, the stadium seats back there, concrete seats, those will be closed off too. Uh, but uh, I'm anxious on uh, getting started on this. It should be uh, should be a nice project. It'll be real nice once it's done. Bob's been out there, trimmed some of the low hanging trees so the, the contractor can move around freely and stuff in there. So yeah, we're, we're looking forward to it. It should be real nice. And any one of you are more than welcome to come out and, and see the work going on uh, during the duration. It's it, the 25 working days will be Monday through Friday. Um, it'll be probably eight till four thirty or so since we have the homes that back up there, we don't want to be there too early. So, but you're more than welcome to come out and see how, how things are progressing on that. So are, that's, you, are you posting like, um, signage right now to say the track's going to be closed those dates or yes, tomorrow, yeah. tomorrow we have, uh, these larger laminated green signs that just explain what's going to happen on the track and everything uh, that it, we're going to start to actually will be closed down to the public uh, starting on the 14th and then running through the 29th. Right. All that sign is just going out tomorrow morning, about six 30 in the morning. I have my guys putting it out. So um, yeah, it's not a whole uh, lot of uh, lead time. It, it's 11 days. And I know we're going to have some people that are going to be pretty upset, but uh, I think but, they'll be happy on the back end though. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, the plan is, uh, to try to get in there and, and get things taken care of. So um, that's about it for the running track. So, so question for you, I'm wondering how the bid came in uh, versus uh, the budget. Uh, to be honest with you, the the, um, the bid came in at 367,000 and we have a grant from CDBG uh, for 365,000. Yeah, so it, it worked out real well uh, and uh, like I said, we're looking forward to doing the project. So, yeah, um, that's about it. Any other questions anybody have or anything? So please, yeah, you're more than welcome to come out there and see me while the track's going on. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, next we have preview of proposed parks CIP. Yes, that's back to me. Thank you, Ron, for allowing me to take a break. <laughs> um, at the next month's PRC meeting, we're actually going to bring the proposed uh, CIP to you for the Parkland Dedication Fund. And, and that will be really uh, the first cut at what we're gonna take to council as part of our proposed budget process. And we do like to bring the park projects to you first. So you have a good sense as to what's going on. And if you have any input in how we could prioritize these uh, among the various fiscal years. And I think we've heard uh, some things from you in the past. So we, we, we think we understand the priorities, but uh, there's certainly room for us to reconsider and reevaluate. Uh, but the projects that you're going to see, and, and I will say that most of these projects are, are carryover projects. Uh, so obviously, you know, you've got Campbell Park, which was funded, you know, several years ago in the budget, but is now going to actively be a fiscal year 22 project. You won't actually see that in what's being presented but sometimes we get questions on why aren't the current projects in there? So I just wanted to call that one out, you know, right up front. What you'll see as a fiscal year 23 project will be the parking lot work at John D. Morgan Park. So we know we've got some work to do on the parking lots to see if we can, if we can reconfigure those to gain, you know, some additional capacity. We're also gonna be looking at uh, if there are ways that we can tighten up the, 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 the parking lots that are kind of in line with what Natasha spoke with you before about the, uh, some of the issues that we have with the picnic areas. So sometimes the reason people drive pickups and other vehicles into the park is because it's relatively easy to do so. So part of our parking lot work might be to see if we can make that a little more difficult. Um, 
in fiscal year 24, you, you were proposing to begin the design of the John D. Morgan Budside restroom replacement project. We anticipate that um, we anticipate that the playground it will be wildly successful <laughs> or continue to be wildly successful. And uh, you know, and as a result of that, sometimes in a in a in a renovated park, uh, restroom capacity can become an issue. We're we're experiencing that and correcting that at Campbell Park. We'll have an opportunity to do the same at, at at John D. Morgan. So we again we have the design money showing in fiscal year 24, construction in fiscal year 25. We will have uh, we're proposing Virginia Park renovation, going you know also covering two fiscal years where we'll begin the design in fiscal year 25, with the construction in 26. That park is in relatively good condition to some of the other ones that we've renovated late uh, lately. So. We think that the timing will work out on that. And then uh, in out years, we have a couple of, of standalone projects, uh, John D. Morgan on the, on the Rincon side. So we will do a, a, uh, we'll do a building assessment to see if, uh, first of all, to assess what the condition of the building is and to see if we can, if we can maybe change the use if, or if it needs a change of use, what we should be evaluating it for. Uh, we have that budgeted in fiscal year 24. And then we'll also look at the at the Rincon side playground, which we made some improvements in not that long ago in fiscal year 26. Um, I should also note that on the John D. Morgan, that you won't see this in the in the in, in the proposed capital budget, but we're currently un underway with a project to uh, improve the restrooms on the Rincon side at John D. Morgan. So those have been closed for a couple months. Uh, it's an ADA uh, access and ADA, um, uh, well, it's, it's an accessibility issue. So we are reconfiguring those uh, with, with new fixtures, new partitions, uh, improving the access. And those restrooms will actually reopen uh, later this month. But when we do the assessment, we'll be looking at the, at the building in, in total. Uh, so that's really what we'll be bringing to you officially uh, just also want to point out to you that things that you will not see in the Park Glen Dedication Fund, but we're proposing to fund through other, other capital fund mechanisms. Uh, at the community center, we are going uh, to propose doing a certain level of, of roof replacements. We've done a, a roofing assessment of many city facilities. We have recommendations to, to do roofing improvements and, and roofing uh, improvements and replacements over the next five years at a cost of more than $2 million. I don't know that we will be able to accommodate all that in, in our, in our, in our regular CIP, but uh, it's not an all or nothing proposition. We're going to do the best that we can. So you'll probably see some reference to that. Uh, we're also going to be doing some, some fire alarm, fire alarm improvements as well at, also at the community center and uh, some improvements related to the heritage theater boiler. But again, those will be in the city's regular CIP, not the, not the Parkland Dedication Fund. And then lastly, also wanted to call your attention to, we will be proposing moving forward with the assessment of what we're calling the Pruneyard Creek Trail Extension. And this would be funded with, with some development money that we received from the owners of the Pruneyard when they got their approval to expand and reconfigure. And if we're successful, we would we would run a trail spur from the northern parking structure, you know, where the creek trail kind of has a little spur connection there, and take it all the way along the embankment, uh, I should say below the embankment of Highway 17 out to Campbell Avenue. So it would tie in right about where the portals are. And again, at this point, we're proposing only using developer money for that. Uh, we would still have to work at an agreement with Caltrans and and come up with a design, but it, it not anticipated that that it would be a very uh, a very difficult design because there is a flat space, you know, at the base of that embankment. So that's what we'll be talking about in our CIP. And next month we'll be focused on the Parkland Dedication Fund portion of that. So if you've got any thoughts, input, um, or not, we'll you're know, happy to take that now, and, or we can discuss it in more detail next month. Todd, that's a pretty uh, hefty to-do list. It is. It is. Actually, I'm kind of surprised. I would have thought with everything happening the past two years, the budget would not have allowed some of those. That's very positive. Well, the, 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 
the parkland dedication fund tends tends to do okay right that's the one that's the tied the tied to new housing units and uh you know it our funding has been challenging at times but we re um we we kind of re um we, we recalibrated the fees back in 2019 brought we didn't bring them all the way up to what current land value is we brought them up to about 80 percent when we take the fee schedule to council in april we're going to be looking at uh raising that more than the cpi we're, we're you know internally we're talking about you know I'm not sure that there'll be the uh, a willingness by the council to go from 80% to 100, but maybe we can go from 80% to 90%, and maybe we can step into the 100% over over two or three years. So um, it would it would only help us in terms of being able to to build new park amenities to serve the new residents, because that's really what that funding mechanism is for. And you said that was increased what two years ago? Was that what it was? It was approved at the end of 2019. I'm just kind of wondering how much we got extra because it was approved versus the old rates. Yeah, that's something that I could probably, you know, work backwards with Natasha on the math and we could come up with yeah. a number. But I remember we spent some time on that. So we did. it'd be kind of like nice yeah. to figure out how much extra money the city got from that. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Great stuff. Okay. Now let's go to the uh, always exciting committee reports. To start with the Parks and Creek Trails, Chair Teeter. Okay. Uh, well, I personally am at the, uh, the the Campbell Park, you know, two or three times a week, and it's it's looking wonderful. It's busy. I did notice that there are two pretty well established homeless camps, and and Todd probably knows them. One of them is rather large. I mean, they the the, the tents and the structures almost look permanent. <laughs> I mean, whoever's living there is, knows what they're doing, I think. But as a walker out there, you're not really aware of the people coming to you or bothering you. They're just doing their thing. They're living there. That's, you know, that's fine. Um, and the, okay, and, and Edith Morley, I was by there and my gosh, during the day with the parents and the old kids, very busy. So any of our other committee members, did you get a chance to go to some parks? I was at John D. Morgan and that one's always, you know, I always think it's pretty good, but I noticed that there's been a couple of places where trees have died and we now have big boulders in place. So, and it actually looks nice and watching sporting events and stuff for the school. It gives you an opportunity to sit on a rock and watch <laughs> instead of sitting on the grass. And then um, the other park, Savanovich. No, that's not that. That's the little one. Um, Jack Fisher. Thank you. Um, Jack Fisher lo is looking really good too. So, so yeah, that's, those are the two parks I'm at more than any. And then Virginia park. I'm that one's kind of hit or miss. Sometimes there's nobody there and other times there can be five or six families there with little kids. That was good coverage. Uh, I, I walked the community center near the track every other day or so with my dog. Um, everything looks great out there. Yeah, I went to John D. Morgan Park because I had not seen the completed project yet, so I stopped by there last Thursday. It was about two thirds of the way full. A lot of kids having a lot of fun. Um, I tried the bells. So I will say it's the one thing that I don't think will last 12 months will be those bells. <laughs> I can see those breaking at some point. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, great stuff. I'll go over to the tree, trees committee and Chair Fidrich. Um, wasn't a very big month again. Thank you for letting me take over this <laughs> this uh, <laughs> section. <laughs> so um, I'm looking forward to something happening next month, though. So uh, special events, Chair Mitchell. I wish I had even <laughs> something to report as well. Is there bunnies and bonnets? I wasn't, I don't think so, right? No, That's there's no um, egg yeah. hunt or bunnies and bonnets. Parade. That's what I thought, yeah. So not much to report on special events. Hopefully by fall, we'll have some more events. We're hoping. 
Okay. Let's go over then to the staff reports. We have Parks up first and Todd, we're back to you again. Well, yeah, you heard plenty from me and, and Ron on some of the capital projects. So we're gonna turn it over to Bob to talk about more about the operational status and where we are. And he's got a couple of events coming up that I think you'll find of interest. Good afternoon, good evening. Nice to see everybody. I made some notes about your comments. Busy and wonderful is a little bit of a theme and we really appreciate that feedback. I definitely will send out uh, the word tomorrow and Friday when I see the staff that their work is being noticed and appreciated. And that means a lot to them. Uh, I wanna let you know that we've uh, recently hired a temporary employee who had worked here for six months. He had had a job offer at another agency, which I won't mention, which he lives quite close to. And I said, hey, are, are you going for that job? Are you next, we're, we're gonna be hiring here. Are you you're gonna interview? He said, yes, I am gonna interview. He actually ended up uh, being our successful number one candidate. And when I asked him why choose Campbell over the other agency, it had to do with appreciation. He says, I feel it when I walk the parks. The people thank me. It's a good vibe. And that's a place he wants to work. And he's here and he's doing a great job. So <laughs> I am going to pass on the notes that you folks uh, made about uh, the facilities. And you kind of threw me for a loop there with the boulders. So maybe we can talk a little bit more about that later, you know? Yeah, I mean, it might be a cool design idea. I don't know. I mean, that's for another day, but definitely interested to hear what you have to say about that. And as the uh, topic of the night was busy, uh, as from the comments from you folks, how do we keep our sites looking good? Well, one of the things we're doing is we are uh, closing the community center's main field for one week only in tight cooperation with the uh, with Lauren Merriman from the community center recreation staff. And that allowed us to deep tine aerate that facility. Uh, I don't know if you guys know what a deep tine aerator is. It's a big tractor you'd see like on a farm. Yeah, and it's got hydraulic uh, PTO mounted daggers that are about this long, maybe an inch in diameter that jam into the ground multiple times and break up that compacted soil. All those kids, playing on there and adults and everybody it just makes it harder and harder so what's good about that well it provides air into the soil provides water into the soil and also allows the plant to absorb nutrients more easily you take all those things together and it should hopefully reduce our water use okay we all know it's really dry out there and we're uh on a, have to turn on our water it's a little bit early this year and so the team is diligently uh, checking all the irrigation systems. We have many, many, many valves and it takes some time to, to just go through them all from being off more or less in, in fall. So uh, that's kind of what we're doing at the community center. Uh, we do have some other good news. Uh, we have three other new employees that we're bringing on. They're scheduled to start on Monday and we hope that all their background check goes through. That's another COVID hangover. Um, so we're working on it and we have one, one folk, uh, fellow has a, a park management degree, AS from West Valley, another uh, employee we stole away from, uh, Happy Hollow. And so we're really, really excited about the, uh, the team that we're bringing on here. I think that they're going to, uh, respect and, and, uh, keep up the status with what we have going uh, we also have two new temps that we're trying to bring on board. They'll be assisting with the water truck for watering trees in downtown and newly planted trees throughout the facility. So that's really exciting. And uh, since Bud was mentioned a couple of times, the Bud Avenue playground, I want to let you know that next Wednesday we're doing a walkthrough of the playground and inspecting all the plant material, irrigation, uh, everything with our inspector and the contractor as we will be more or less officially taking over 
all of the maintenance of that, good or bad. And I just wanna let you know that I did hear your comments about uh, volunteering and uh, Natasha was pretty much point on with her assessment, uh, talk to Bob Carlson. But uh, we do have two things coming up, uh, which you may or may not be interested. One of them is called Keep America Beautiful, it used to be known as uh, Great American Litter Pickup. It's tentatively set up for May 14th, which is a Saturday. And uh, that would be something still more or less COVID appropriate, because we don't know what, what's going to happen. And instead of a large group, which some of you may have attended, where we have maybe two or 300 people at, a, at one area, it'd probably be smaller groups throughout the city that uh, maybe there's a, a church group here and a rotary group here, what have you, that type of thing. So we're in the planning stages of that that's starting uh, tomorrow, actually. And then we have our annual Arbor Day celebration scheduled for April 29th. And that's uh, going to be at Campbell Park. And we're replacing some missing trees out there, uh, seven of them. And we're hoping to get a donation from the Rot Campbell Rotary Club. And also using the Friends of Children with Special Needs uh, as our demonstrating group. Uh, I don't know if you guys are aware of the Friends of Children with Special Needs, but it's a group that uh, has been volunteering at uh, Morley Park, raking leaves and doing all types of, of tasks on Tuesdays and Thursdays for about an hour and a half. And they bring a, a couple of, of the instructors and then they bring the students, which the students are anywhere from, you know, 16 to, to 40. And they uh, do a great job helping out at that park. I was very curious to hear what, when I heard the word Morley, it was like, okay, what am I going to hear next? But it, it should look really good. And so that's part of uh, how we've been able to do that. Uh, does anybody have any questions? I have a random question. How many full-time staff do you have working on the parks? I mean, you are mentioning hiring three people, it seems like. I'm just curious how, yeah. many, how when, many people you have working. So parks look good. Yeah. How many people do you have working on those? Well, we have, we, when fully staffed, we'll have nine. Nine. Okay. okay. But so remember, Going to go out on a limb here a little bit, but you have a car, looks great, windows are clean, the paint's all polished, and you say, Hey, let's go to LA. And I go, Hey, you can't take this to LA. The transmission shot, the brakes are bad, <laughs> right? It's kind of like that. We are really good at, at making the, the larger impact things uh, look seamless. <laughs> and, and our parks are in much better shape than that, but. But there were a lot of behind the scenes stuff. So there you go to make it look like there's not much to do. Thank you for your comment. Anything else? I, I did notice at Campbell Park, maybe it's been there a long, long time, but you have a, a big black receptacle and a blue one right by the bridge, right by the, the, the playground. And so that's great for recyclable versus just trash. Yes. So that is that relatively new? They look new. They're, I'm not exactly sure which ones you mean. We we do have on the side of the bridge, the east side of the bridge, we have a recycle bin. The east, yes. Yeah, those are new. Okay. Um, Todd was uh, helpful in getting some uh, grant money, I believe, yeah, to great. have yeah. those installed. Yeah. So, okay. They look good. All right, thank you. Yeah, I wanted to just add add on to to something that Bob was talking about, with, which was our staffing, and you know, we we have been challenged with with. Uh, not only staffing, but I'd say more particularly with how to fill vacancies over the last couple of years. And we've kind of had this uh, this rash of, 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 of retirements that are all coming through in relatively cl close proximity. And in parks of the nine staff that Bob's referring to, we, we, have, we have three lead worker positions. And beginning what last October and then, you know, maybe October of 20 and then going to December of 21, all three of the lead workers retired. And uh, we have, we have really good staff. So, so, so here's the good news. We did some, we did some in-house promotion and we filled all three of the lead worker positions with, with, with staff that we already had who are highly qualified and, and they do a great job. But then as you elevate them, that's, 
that's good. That's what necessitated the need to hire the, the more entry level line level maintenance staff that Bob's talking about. And so it's really taken us the better part of a year and a half, almost two years, I guess you could say, to finally have all the dominoes fall and we can start bringing in new people. And I think we're in, we're in a pretty good position. Um, we do have another pending uh, retirement, right? I think our last, we have another park maintenance worker who will be officially retiring as of April. Um, even though we probably have already seen the last of him. Um, so when that position is officially vacant, we'll, we'll hope to hire, you know, a yet another employee. So we've been, uh, we've been playing catch up with our staffing levels. So this is good news all around. Yes. Thanks, Bob. And I just like to say, we have not noticed, which is, which is impressive, right? I mean, with that much turnover and all that stuff going on, the parks still look fantastic. Well, as so, Bob said, so. the, the car yes, is yes. great on the outside. <laughs> the outside paint looks great. <laughs> And I, I just want to add, I'm just so I'm, how impressed I am that Chair Keter knows there was a new recycling bid <laughs> next to the bridge. I mean, that's very impressive. We know we know you're watching things over there. <laughs> okay, thanks, Bob. Thanks, Todd. Um, Natasha, you're up. All Recreation right. and Community Services. Thank you. So um, this Friday, the Ainsley House will reopen for tours. So uh, mark your calendars if you'd like to go over there. Um, they unfortunately will not be hosting any Mother's Day Mother Day Mother's Day teas this year. So um, just the tours that will be going on. The wedding season will begin soon as well for the Ainsley House. Uh, the Heritage Theater, they had their final show last Friday. It was a Prince tribute, which uh, turned out to be a fantastic show. And they sold about 400 tickets. So half the house was sold out was sold um but it was a tribute so and still in the pandemic wearing masks so it's still a good turnout for us uh the picnic policy the modifications uh they were approved by council so thank you for your efforts with that we've ordered the signs um, and we're transitioning these spaces to be reservable for the summer so it is the information is online on our activity guide and that but we still need to do some stenciling to make sure uh, the community understands that they're now reservable. Um, and we did get the position through PD as well. So we'll be there working towards filling that um, position so that we have staff on site in the summer. Uh, the summer preview, so the online digital version of our activity guide that just has camps and swim lessons is now live on our site. And registration for residents will be Tuesday, March 15th at 9 a.m. And we'll open the following day, the 16th for every for just open registration at 9 a.m. Um, so we're very excited uh, with the new removal of the mass um, that will have a very positive summer. We are hoping to have field trips for our camps and have a more normal looking summer out at the park and swim lessons as well. Recreation swim will also return this summer. So Tuesdays through Fridays, it's for an hour from 2.15 to 3.15. And there's a two hour time slot on Saturdays from 2.15 to 4.15. It's $2 per person, or this year we're offering people to buy a summer pass. It's $40 for the whole summer, so you can go as many times, but it's not transferable. So you buy $40 per person in your family, and you can pop in. You're always on the roster to kind of drop in for rec swim. We are also doing something new on Mondays from 2.15 to 3.15. It'll be rec swim for a 50 plus population, so they can get in the water without all the chaos. Um, <laughs> and do, you know, whatever they want to do. Um, the fun run, we are have a, we have a tentative date now for April 30th. So we were having troubles uh, with our timer who has worked with us for years. He is not available. So we're having to find another vendor. So we are slated for April 30th. So I will have that confirmed for you. And I will let you know, as soon as that's ready to rock and roll, it will be in person out at the at the park, yes, it is. A, it, we're, we've been pushing it off so that we could do a live event. And our summer concerts, I know I said this last time, we will be having four summer concerts. They will start June 23rd. So when we talk about special events and opportunities to volunteer. Here's two of them for you. So we have the four concerts that we could definitely always use help at and uh, the fun run when we get closer and that gets finalized. 
And lastly, talking about filling vacancies, the recreation manager position has, is currently posted. It'll close this Friday. Hopefully um, by April, we'll have a new manager on board. And then the adult center coordinator, uh, that position will be posted next Monday. And so that will be open for a couple of weeks. And hopefully um, by late April, we'll have that position filled as well. And that concludes my report. Maybe Natasha, you add a um, an hour swim for forty five older and older is floaties only. Okay, <laughs> just go out there and relax. <laughs> that's that's that my good that, now you're speaking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Actually, I, I did have um, some friends who went to the concert on Friday night. That it was a very good show. Been a lot of fun. Um, okay, so um, last thing is good of the game. Anybody want to kick us off? Is that good or bad? Anybody else? It's good to see everybody. Sorry, I wasn't here last month in person, but yeah, it's nice to see everybody. And um, and th and I received a lovely gift in the mail, which thank you. I'm sure every, you guys probably spoke about it last time, but I was like, what is this? <laughs> I had to get educated from my family. <laughs> is that it, anybody else? Um, so my good of the game is about John T. Morgan, which has been our go to park we're there every weekend we have all our friends come out and in fact we are celebrating my son's fifth birthday party and we rented the picnic area that's right next door so it's it's amazing that park is absolutely incredible but it is very busy on saturday mornings so Please make sure your bounty house is by a certified. Builder. I did. I okay. well, I still haven't ordered it. That's the problem. And my son's like, it needs to be a Mario bounce house. So, yeah. Don't want to have you something brought up the council. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, I think that's it for tonight. Thanks, everybody. Great meeting. Adjourned. <laughs>